is Football Saturday all the way until five. John Duggan with you. Remember, Football and Off the Ball brought to you by Sky. Get all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sports and Premier Sports. We're streaming the conversation as well. You can listen across the country on News Talk. Also watch us if you'd like on the digital and social channels on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter. And on the OTB Sports app, delighted to be joined on the line by the former Republic of Ireland and Liverpool defender Mark Lawrence and ex-League of Ireland and FLA Cup winner Graeme Garton is in studio with me, as is the broadcaster and journalist Johnny Ward. You can text us 53106. Dominic Solanke has scored in the first minute for Bournemouth at Arsenal. They lead 1-0 after Manchester City won 2-0 at home to Newcastle. Arsenal feeling the jitters already. Yeah, it's probably, they say it's, you can score too early in a game, but I think Arsenal will be happy if they told the players you're going to be 1-0 down after a minute they'd still be confident enough but in light of the Man City uh, result JD obviously this is a must win game for Arsenal yeah two points there's the gap now after City beat Newcastle by two goals nil. we're watching Arsenal here so we'll keep you right up to speed on what's happening party back in the team today Fabio Vieira playing as well for Arsenal in the middle of the park and uh, Tommy Asu has got a berth in the defence as Arsenal attack here are they going to score oh great save from Neto Arsenal follow up and it's cleared off the line it seemed off the bar there so Bournemouth uh, holding on the cherries already So that is a phenomenal save JD really low down to Neto's left and uh, yeah it's already Bournemouth 10 men behind the ball holding on here Laro, you saw Man City beat uh, Newcastle um, Phil Foden back to form four goals in three games now Laura, are we there? Sorry, Johnny, just came across all very, very garbled. Um, <laughs> and I watched the City game, I presume that's what you said. Yeah. Um, in the end, they won quite comfortably. But look, if uh, Newcastle had taken the chances, certainly at 1-0, it could have been a completely different ne- uh, game. They've lost away a little bit. All of a sudden, they don't look like a team that's uh, capable of scoring. But what a, what a clever, clever change by the manager, by Guardiola, takes De Bruyne off. Silver comes on and, and scores within what two minutes. Um, so I would say a, a routine, routine win for City. But there's just something about them a little bit today that I thought they were they were really quite aggressive as though they were thinking, "Come on, last third of the season, let's really kick on here." Well, hopefully you can hear me now. Phil Foden is back to form. Laro four goals in three games. Yeah, well, look, you know, look, look at his first touch the way I mean. Um, the big left back for Newcastle has no chance once Foden cuts inside and in the end he, he beats another two players as well slight de- deflection but he's, he's an absolutely quality player he's done it again hasn't he Guardiola he, he leaves players out for a while and you're thinking what on earth is he doing and, and then they come back in and they're as good if not even better than they were in the first place so I mean he is he is a class act and um, but I look at City and I, I really seriously think that if, if, if you have a go at getting at them they are vulnerable and, and they will concede opportunities to you. But it's uh, the race has started today, I think. I think it's you, you just kind of know now that this is it. This is this is the head to head for me for the rest of the season could, with themselves you, and Arsenal. Could you sense that in the stadium and, and the atmosphere around the game? Was, you seen them when the second goal went in, they celebrated a little bit probably more aggressively than they have done in previous games that they know that they're in their title race. And like you said, City tend to ramp up at this time of the season. Yeah, I think I think as well is that it's you know whatever you think about Newcastle, they're very they're a very tough nut to crack because they're good defensively. They get men behind the ball. Um, Guimaraes is becoming a you know a top player almost week by week, and it just so happens at the moment that, that they're struggling to score. But you know Eddie Howe on the way back on the bus or the flight or whatever it is will be thinking. If we'd scored opportune chances at, at those moments, it would have been completely different. So we won't won't be too worried about that. But City, you just know with City that it's, every time it's the it's the business end of the season, isn't it? Because still in the FA Cup, obviously got a chance in the league and Champions League coming up also as well. And um, I think probably there aren't too many players unfit at the moment. No, or injured, no, shall like I say. yeah, yeah, yeah. You had Phillips on the bench, you had Stones on the bench, you had Bernardo yeah. Silva who came on, as you say. So it's pretty much a full deck, Laro. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, that's uh, you can't you can't ask for any more at that particular stage because you ju- you just never know. And he has he has plenty of games in which to keep the squad happy because he's got the FA Cup as well, hasn't he? And um, and the Champions League. And he has made in the last few weeks one or two strange decisions. And I suppose, listen, if 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 when De Bruyne came off and obviously he was substituted then and your man comes on and, and scores, imagine imagine if he hadn't scored and it went it went to one one 
you look at the manager and think, what on earth is he doing? But he generally gets the big calls right, doesn't he? He does something sometimes where you think, what is he doing? But you just can't argue with, with A, what he's done and what he's achieved, most definitely. You were before the show talking about Bernardo Silva, Johnny. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, I thought I spoke a bit about the, uh, the the game against Leipzig. I watched that game in, in Germany. I thought he was really outstanding. He was the fulcrum of the team, and De Bruyne wasn't playing that night. And um, De Bruyne was taken off today. I thought, still don't think he's quite at it. Um, you know, he he put in one unbelievable ball early on to um, Haaland, who headed it wide, but. Um, yeah, De Bruyne, De Bruyne, for whatever reason, just isn't isn't playing as well as he can play or could play anyway at this season, I think. And when Bernardo Silva came on, um, he wasn't on the pitch long at all when he got the goal, Jiddy, and it it shouldn't be missed as well that um, the goal started from uh, you know it was a, it was a pretty high press in terms of uh, so Newcastle had had a really good chance actually at one nil they had good chances in the game as well um, and so at one nil it was still kind of in the melting pot and. Pope got the ball, Bernardo Silva pressed him very, very hard. Newcastle were um, just under a little bit of pressure with the ball. Bernardo Silva came back into kind of a non-side position and waited for a lovely little flick from Haaland and got what was the decisive goal. I'd agree with Lauro that if you look at it, I think we might talk about a, an article in the New York Times that was um, in the Examiner also today about trans, uh, you know, systems and and formations and so on. Man City played a sort of a a four two three one um, with Gundogan, Rodri, and then Foden, De Bruyne, Grealish behind Haaland with Nathan Ake left back. And I thought they were very vulnerable down that side to any sort of high ball in behind Ake. And um, the, the 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 one thing City have, and um, they'll obviously be hoping Arsenal uh, frustrated today. The one thing City had today was they're playing Newcastle at a time. And I think Newcastle's confidence just isn't isn't particularly high at the moment. They missed some great yeah. chance in front of goal, no real conviction. And I think City on another day might have dropped points today, but uh, Foden was good. I think that the Foden Grealish Haaland access um, is is probably the best. Either that or Mares, one com- combination of those two in behind Haaland. But um, the De Bruyne one's interesting. I think with Bernardo Silva, they might be a better side than Haaland at the moment. I think he's just he just completely dictates the game. Um, but definitely with that system they play, teams will be able to get at them. And I think Leipzig will quietly fancy their chance while they're doing something in the Champions League. How many players in Newcastle need Laro to maybe get further up the pitch in terms of the league position? Oh, not too many. Um, you know, as, as Johnny just said, as, and I said before, the, they had really outstanding chances across the six-yard box. I mean, two most definitely were City would have scored. Uh, Harlem would have scored, and there's no doubt about that. But it, it's like anything. It's like, we, you know, we're going about that chance because they've not got a centre-forward and they're not scoring goals. But that, that result today, um, yes, City did deserve it, but it, it could have been completely different. Um, not many... Not many, John, at all. So probably another two, maybe three. Um, and I think the, the problem for me has just been, they've, and I think Johnny might have just said it there, that they've run out of confidence a little bit. You know, the Carabao Cup, massive effort, we know, um, great atmosphere and all those. But, but you looked at Man United and they basically, they just kept Newcastle at arm's length and it, and it was comfortable. And you always felt that, that Manchester United could score another goal if, if they needed one. And so just at this moment, they're just going through kind of a dry period. But it'll come back because the bottom line is they are very, very difficult to beat. And as we know, very few teams go to City and, and, and even score, let alone get a point or three. They're, prob- yeah. they're probably ahead of where they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. for their second season. Yeah. They were in the relegation zone this time mm. last year, I think, before Howe takes the job or after he takes they the job. They had a great run. Yeah, they had a great Christmas run. And, and, uh, yeah, and the start, they had a great start to the season. But they're probably ahead of where they should be in, in only second season in charge and considering the finances that have just come in. So I'd say, I think, like you said, they're not involved in the relegation zone. They're hoping to qualify for Europe, whether that's Champions League or... Europa, um, Europa League or UEFA Cup so they're ahead of where they should be at this point so they are going to dip at some stage they're just dipping probably at the wrong time which was around the time they were in a cup final and even against Liverpool they looked dangerous against Liverpool but they, they also yeah. looked like they were going to concede goals as well and it just became a case of who was going to take their chances and at the time Liverpool did and then the red card just kills the game for them Yeah, Amaran couldn't I'll tell you what John, John vein. Uh, is that Isaac came on today God he looks lively he, he, look, he looks like a real, real player. And I know he's been in and out of the team. He got injured. And, and I, I watched him score at, at Liverpool. But um, 
I wouldn't mind betting he's in the team for the next game whenever it is because he, he just looked he looked not only quick and strong, but he's he's very, very skillful as well. And I think if if they get him, you know, the the middle of the penalty area, he'll get them goals most definitely. If you can get the service. Yeah, the, the Rory Smith, it's a fascinating article. Um, just almost like this notious thing as formations, the 4 3 3 4 two, like it all becomes a fluid thing. I'll just quote some of this. On the surface, there may be scant similarity between the ticket tacket that turned Barcelona into the finest club in history and the sturm und drang of the energy ring confused, heavy metal inflected German pressing game. Underneath, though, they share two crucial characteristics. They're both precisely, almost militaristically choreographed, players moving by rote and by edict in preordained patterns learned and honed and trained and they both rely essentially on a conception of football as a game defined less by the position of the ball and more by the occupation and creation of the space and just the disruptors to this I'll quote another piece here the others in less rarefied climes have started to follow that model is much more instructive Luciano at Spalletti's Napoli the most captivating team in Europe is barreling towards the Serie A title thanks to a free form virtuistic style that does not deploy the likes of uh, Visha Varchgela or Victor Ozyman as puppets but encourages them to think and interpret from themselves Themselves. Fernando Dinis, the coach of the Brazilian side Fluminense, has even given it a name, the apositional style, placing it in direct but perhaps not intentional conflict with the positional play that Guardiola and his teams have perfected. Dinis, like Spalletti, does not believe in assigning his players specific positions or roles, but in allowing them to interchange at will to respond to the exigencies of the game. He's not concerned with the control of specific areas of the field. The only zone that matters to him and to his team is the one near the ball. In his eyes, football is not a game defined by the occupation space. It's centred instead on the ball. So it's interesting the disruption, the fluidity and the systems and all this kind of thing. So I'm just kind of interested, Graham, because you're coaching at the moment. How much is formation a thing that we look at on the outside vis-a-vis what actually happens during a match? I think the rotations and... and uh, where space is found on the pitch can be occupied by different players at different times. So we've seen it a couple of years ago, probably about 10 years ago, it was your centre midfielder dropped in between your two centre backs, you, you, you became a flat tree, your, your full backs are push on, then it became where centre midfielders are dropping out into full back areas, your full backs are pushing on and your wingers coming in off the line. Um, there's more of a fluidity. In, and the top teams have more of a fluidity where players occupy certain spaces on the pitch to disrupt the opposition and then it's about how can you disrupt them and wh- where you're attacking the disruption so if there's an imbalance in the back four and an imbalance in the midfield can you as the team in possession capitalise on that and it's about finding them spaces but it's also what, what you touched on there you're empowering the players to find them spaces and giving them an understanding so even though you have patterns of play and build up play it's all about then watching what the opposition do to counteract that and then you having a, you having something to counteract that again so yes they're going to stop us playing wide so a winger comes in off the line etc so it's it, it, it's all about fluidity I remember going on a, co- on a coaching course you, um, a few years ago what, from EA license just the CPD and one of the things that came out about was Real Madrid's model of they basically had four set positions on the pitch and the rest of them was could be any player you wanted in any different position. So the goalkeeper being the main, being the obvious one and the second one was the centre forward. They always made sure they had a centre forward that was going to be pivotal and then the two centre backs and the rest of them was all interchangeable. He touches on Madrid in that, in that he empowers the players to make the decisions and when you put good you players put into players. good into formations they're generally going to problem solve and find the best solution. The top players will do that. The, the, their decision making is quicker than it is at the highest level. And you've probably seen that with even Mark Lawrence and touch on it as well. Like some of the Phil Neal and scored some goals, some fullback mm-hmm. scored goals for Liverpool and European Cup finals because they're just taking space that was that was left. Um, when he, even with the Gleesh always played as a drop in striker. You know, our, the Arsenal side would have played with Bearcamp dropping in, and then it's about runners off. So it's all about finding what can cause the opposition problems in an attacking sense. I think formations come into it when you're really talking about defensive positions and where you need to be and how you can, you know, basically nullify the opposition's threats. But it, it's a really interesting article because, again, it's just about occupying space and players. But the, the thing with the Guardiola one, for all his ticky-tacky stuff at, at Barcelona, he still had to have a Messi to win the Champions League and he hasn't done it without him. 
because as much as all the positional play he has and it's and it's football by numbers and and I love what he does you still need somebody that has that moment of brilliance that can separate and can break down a team and you've seen that with Messi even in the World Cup this year and you've seen that with bringing in Haaland now that it's geared up towards them winning the Champions League I think Spain without what he's talking about were a good example of when it obviously yeah. doesn't work this you know in the World Cup what do you like you think about all this, Lara? This debate about tactics, formations. What, what what was the style? As it you know, like when you were playing for Liverpool in the eighties versus when you were doing all the commentaries for the BBC in recent years. Well, I mean, the game's never changed, has it? I mean, in many many ways, I, and I get what the boys are saying and what what your man wrote about. But look, you know, you can only talk about your time your time as a player, in, and in our team. Basically, we were just, I think we were always very conscious that we had a, a really strong spine. So, uh, you know, myself and Hansen, possibly, Sunes, Dalglish and Rush. And you even even myself and, and, and Al, we were allowed to go out and play all the time. And it's it just lots, it's common sense and someone just tucks in. So you've got two against one at the back. So you're not one against one unless obviously you're chasing the game. You know, that wide players coming in when the opposition got the ball to make so you make the the, the, the field narrower. Um, obviously, go out wide to make it bigger when you've got it. Midfield runners, Terry McDermott scored loads and loads of goals coming through from late in midfield because you know people would struggle to to pick him up. Um, and soon S would, would would kind of dominate the game. So it's not changed massively. The other thing in talking about Man City, I mean, who's a young kid who didn't start today? The eighteen year old Lewis. Right back. Yeah, I mean, basically, he's, he's been playing in midfield, isn't he? Yeah. In in, in like this box thing, as they seem every 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 time I watch football, every week there's a different there's a different name for something. But it's not you know playing in the box, which obviously the box used to be the opposition penalty area. But he just comes in and plays and, and gets on with it. And then occasionally, if they're under the cost, he'll have he'll have to drop out and, and you know players a, a right back. And look, I mean, everybody's. Everybody's lots of different things. I mean, it wasn't long ago. It's de- a define. You've got to play from hit the back. You know, two wing backs piling forward and all that. It just just changes by the week. But the, the thing for me is, and it's it's always about players and always will be about players. And if you've got top top players, they on the day will decide the way you play and ultimately the result that you get. Um, and and if you don't have them, it, it's very very difficult because then you're talking about the weakest link. Yeah. And then we had we had a left back, as you know, who um, Alan Kennedy, who actually wasn't a particular good footballer. But he scored he scored winning goals in finals, many of them, and only because they, they just you know the our lot the boot room would just say on you go, and then somebody just tucks in for him. So it it ain't rocket science, and I think. In many ways, sometimes with people, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing because, you know, the, everyone comes out with, you know, transition and all these kind of stuff and everything. It, it, it doesn't change. Football does not change whatsoever. But um, when Graham said there, the other thing as well is, if you've got some guy at the top of your team, as in at the front, and he can score for fun, and by the way, he can make his own chances and score for fun, um, you can have whatever whatever systems... Um, you ever want and the way of playing that's the best thing look at Chelsea Ch- Chelsea actually played nice football till they get to a certain part of, of the of their pitch and they never looked like scoring uh, Mark would you would the likes of Sunes who were obviously captain George Side and then mm. um, obviously Douglas goes on to manage it but would you have made changes in game would you were you as empowered by uh, the manager at the time to able to adapt to the game to say right we're going to sit for five minutes we're under the cost sure uh, now that's just a simplistic point of view but you know this winger's Graham coming was, in this this yeah this winger's coming in off the line he's causing yeah. us trouble so we need to adapt to it Was were you able to do that? Yeah yeah we were but I mean we were also getting screamed at by Ronnie Moran but he screamed at you when you were 6-0 up so it didn't make any difference but <laughs> um, when, when, when we played yeah when we played in Europe and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I remember talking to Joe Fagan about this and we very rarely talked about tactics or anything. It was just one day we were kind of chatting about something and he, and and I, and I said like, um, I haven't been there that long and most definitely when we were in Europe, we played 4-5-1. Yeah. Right? And, and I said, and I said, so he just dropped Kenny in. He said, you know what, son? He said, he dropped himself in. Yeah. 
And then instead of saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all brilliant, we're all geniuses, he went, he just, he said he worked it out, that, that away from home in Europe, you know, obviously sometimes under the cosh, he just worked out that where we, he was going to get space or we could hit him with the ball was in a certain position. And, yeah. and, and that's what he did. Um, so you can speak about tactics all day long. I mean, there's, lo- there's lots of good stories about the boot room guys as well about that. And I think they, they went to uh, West Ham and <clears throat> I can't remember who, I think it was Ron Green who was, was a manager. And Liverpool were 3-0 up at half-time. And as it came out in the second half and, and you know, both of the, uh, the dugouts sat down, I think, I think Ron Green was shouting, you know, just remember our practicalities and all that. And apparently Ron Ryan turned around to, to Joe Fagan and he said, oh, we're struggling now, we're going to have to play against practicalities, mm-hmm. as in taking the mickey out of them. But look, there's, you know, we, we've, all, we've all got different ways of looking at it, but... It doesn't really change, does it? I heard I a brilliant so. I heard a brilliant story about how clever Douglas was. He was going in and collecting the ball and he kept spinning out of trouble all the time. And mm. the fella says to him at the end of the game, like how how you never even looked over your shoulder to check which side I was coming and he says he, he seen his shadow behind him on the pitch. Mm. He says he was able to look and see the shadow on his left and he'd spin right or shadow on the right and he'd spin left. And well, he says, to, to, he says you're playing with your back you. when you play with your back to the sun, he says, I know where you are. Mm. Yeah, well, it doesn't happen much in Liverpool. Um, but he was, <laughs> he was, he was, he had radar. He absolutely radar, sonar. You call it, call it what you want. Because the other thing about him as well in that team is that he, he knew where Rushy was, or at least he certainly knew where if he could get the ball to him, exactly where he would be. And if you watch, you know, half the time me and Anthony just we were just watching on the halfway line. You think, oh my god, what's he done now? And he was just. He was unbelievable, seriously was. Um, and he just worked everything out. And in, and in fairness, um, Graham as well, Graham Souness was, um, he was like having a manager on the pitch. And they knew, the boot room knew. They obviously knew. And, you know, he would, he would, um, he would test them sometimes. And uh, we'd come off and talking about R- Ronnie Moran. Ronnie Moran played left back for Liverpool for, for, for quite a long time. And obviously, he was a coach there and eventually a manager, etc. But Ronnie basically was a sergeant major. And if, if you played at left back for one half of the game, it was a nightmare because he, he was on, it was always on that side. And it, it, the ball had come to you and he'd it, say three different things. Thankfully, I didn't play at left back. Um, and uh, I remember we came in one day, and I think obviously we weren't winning and not playing particularly well. And Alan Kennedy used to get it in the net all the time. And Graham just stood up. Graham was captain then. I think uh, he'd taken it over from Phil Tomo. And Graham just said to Ronnie, Ronnie, he said, it can't be him every single week. It's all of us. And, you know, that's that's the type of guy that he was. And in fairness to Ronnie, he, he kind of kept his, his his mouth shut for a little bit. Why, why was Suna such a disaster as a Liverpool manager? Um, I'll tell you why. I know exactly why, because he told me and he said... he. Because he'd been to Rangers, if you remember, he went to Rangers, player manager, got sent off didn't he, against him in the first game for kicking someone in the throat, I think. Oh, yeah. but, <laughs> but he, he, he went over the ball, didn't he, and kicked them in this year, I remember. Oh, yeah. something. And yeah, gave yeah. out about, yeah. pointed at his leg like he got kicked. That was, did you ever see yeah, this? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, well, well, I'm, I'm just back in Scottish football. Good <laughs> yeah. luck, chat. Um, but he, he, if you remember what he did at Rangers, he signed player after player after player and made lots of changes, lots of changes. And he came to, to, to Liverpool... And he said he made changes too soon, which was really unusual because mm. the the thing about Liverpool would be if they thought your legs were going, they'd give you an extra six months just to make absolutely doubly sure that they were going. And he didn't do that, Graham. He just made a decision, I think, with, with Beardsley. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There's, there's quite a few of them. Ray Houghton. Ronnie Whelan. Stop. Ronnie and... And we all thought, oh, he's just, you know, he's just getting rid of them because he knows he might like a drink or whatever and all those kind of things. And he, and he said, no, he said, I just, I wanted my own team. He said, but on hindsight, I should have given all those players another six months just to be absolutely certain. And let's be fair, the three aforementioned were all top players, weren't they? And the legs haven't gone, by the way. 
Yeah, I, I find I find that interesting because I was a I was a kid growing up at that time, and that's it was a, Graham Stevens was manager more or less when I started following Liverpool, and um, the the decay that set in then JD really set you know set in for so long that Liverpool didn't win a Premier League until what was it twenty twenty one or twenty two the COVID year they won the league anyway, and mm. um, it took Liverpool years to recover from that, and I I really I felt that Sunas just got so many things wrong. I thought he signed badly as well, um, but it's interesting. Ah. Just listen to uh, reading Kevin Kilban in the Irish Times today. He, he said I think Sunas is my favourite analyst, like, and uh, I've I've great time for him on TV, but always in the back of my mind and. Glad Lauro said that there. I find that very interesting because you know you have to be ruthless, and Ferguson was ruthless. But when you're coming into a job as big as that, maybe I guess if you make wholesale changes straight away, you can partly lose the dressing room as well. But I, I don't well, think he, he. I think his his signings were a mixed bag as well, if I remember, Lauro. Well, here you are. How about these three? Paul Stewart. I think when he signed Paul Stewart because he looked like Graham. I think Graham thought he was him, <laughs> and he signed uh, Julian Dix. Mm. And who uh, big centre back from Spurs? Neil Ruddock. Oh, left foot. John Razor, Wayne, Scales, Scales, he no, Scales, Scales. Well. John he Scales. He didn't. He didn't yeah. sign him. He was signed after that. But uh, he signed. Um, yeah, the back four What's was. Funny? What's that? Well, so Ruddock was signed after Graham, was he? He may have signed Ruddock, so he didn't sign Scales, but he, he he may have signed Ruddock. Scales and Bab came along at the same time, but he did sign yeah. Dix. And uh, the back four, like if you watch that, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about the latest um, rehearsal of the game tomorrow, but that three-all game, that epic game, if you watch that back when Man United obviously went 3-0 up Liverpool, mm. oh my God, their defending was so bad. It was comically bad. So they, they just, he didn't, I don't know, he signed Nigel Clough, I think, in fairness, was a good signing. Um, yeah. Mixed bag. Yeah, but I think, I think that certainly Ruddock and... Uh, and Dix, I mean, Dix just didn't want to be there. Oh. Mm. Um, I remember actually as well, and, and I think didn't um, Roy Evans took over from from, did, uh, yeah. from Graham. And um, early on, I did an interview. I was actually working for Sky, and I went up to to, to An- Anfield. I did an interview with Roy. I mean, Roy was like I was really close to him when I was at the at Liverpool, and um, we did it. We did it outside. Actually, we did it at training ground. We did it outside, and he said, "Let's go outside and let's have a walk and talk and all that kind of stuff." And Dix wasn't in the first team, and I never forget it was a Monday, and a Monday he just, you know, the lads had a fire beside and all those kind of things. And Dix basically was with the, the the young boys, and he knew we were recording, and he knew we were doing this interview, and he was just chanting ob- obscenities, really, so that they could be heard on on the. Uh, on the camera, and I said, I, I stopped it, and I said, "Hello." I said, "What? What about? What about your man?" And he went. He said, "The sooner he goes, the better." He said, "We can't get him he out." Place was Yarnaby, I think. But like, Mark, was that tough to listen to as somebody who'd been successful at Liverpool to see the decline that quick? That you're saying you're going back to your old club that has been built on standards and legacies and and all that coming down through the boot room from Shankly down and all these who had a connection to him was that tough to see and listen to at the time yeah but I mean it happens to every team doesn't it yeah um, I mean when I was about when when, when Man United went dropped into the second division that was Tommy Dock I think wasn't yeah, it yeah yeah and it you know it, it, it happens doesn't it but um, they, they always the big clubs nearly always always come back and it just it just wasn't, it wasn't kind. The problem will be, so it's, everyone goes raves on about the team of the 80s and all that kind of stuff and, you know, whatever. But the problem then is everybody then compares the next teams to the teams of the 80s and then further down the line, maybe to the teams that were really successful in the, in the 100s, whatever kind of stuff. So you're, you're always going to get that a little bit. And okay. when, when when Fergie very briefly, Judy, when Fergie took over, then and obviously spoke about taking Liverpool off their perch. Like as long as Malik Ferguson was manager, Liverpool were almost never in the title race thereafter. You know, year after year, they under Roy and and to an extent Julia, they got somewhat close at times, but they were never really a threat to Man United. And I, I'd always say Sunas was massively responsible for that. I think he knocked them back so far, so many years, and it's 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 nice to hear anecdotes from that time because that like as a Liverpool, as a kid when football was all. You, you wanted all you were interested yeah. in it was very hard to see Man United Jock, dominate Jock Steen told a, one of the best stories I've heard about Sunis where he wrote he, he told the stories because Steen was really close to Sunis and he, he told the journalist that if ever someone was having a bad time in the game or struggling Sunis would then play on that side 
So if a fullback was struggling, he'd, he'd move over and play mm. beside them. He would get them through that tough little spell. And when when Steam was asked who his most influential player was, he, he mentioned Sunes mm. and that breath to say like, look, he helped everybody. If he didn't let anyone struggle, and I thought there was a measure of the man as because even if it meant he wasn't shining as a player, he meant that the fella beside him was doing better. And, and his I, I should say as well, he did he did do other good jobs. He, you know, he, ah, he, did, yeah. he did. But he won a league cup with Blackburn. Blackburn, he did a decent Blackburn, job. Yeah. Yeah. Went out to Turkey and I think did okay. Just yeah. to Liverpool yeah. was the the yeah. Anis, uh, Like he said, Rivers. it was probably he, he says it himself it was too soon out the mm. Rangers and the Rangers yeah. one where he took over Rangers where they, they were poor and the only way was up for them and he was given a blank checkbook by. By yeah. the people in charge, and he was able to build it the way mm. he wanted. You come into a team that was already successful, and having to maybe rebuild was it, it would be, but and it would have hurt him as well because there was all those, those allegations of you know he was anti-Irish and all that, and a lot of stuff would have hurt him around that Liverpool thing. And I think he'll be regret till the end of his days. Yeah, like sometimes it works out. Like for Julian Dix went back to West Ham and had a successful career. So look, it, uh, some left foot in him. Yeah, it, it, sometimes it works <laughs> out. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, so great um, golfer apparently. Wow. Yeah. Um, by the way, we've got goals in the Premier League Alexis McAllister from the penalty spot for Brighton 1-0 against West Ham Evan Ferguson is playing Aston Villa 1 Crystal Palace 0 uh, Joachim Anderson with an own goal Johnny been watching Arsenal trailing Bournemouth by a goal to nil yeah it's funny whatever you talk about pro- formations here it's basically Bournemouth with 10, 11 men in their own box but they, they scored did, in the first minute Dominic Solanke did a massive chance on the break as well the, the best chance of the game otherwise in, um, in transition Johnny in transition here's one a massive you, chance in transition here, 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 here's one for the for the two of you actually I was just saying this to my um, chauffeur as we went to Watford <laughs> last night it was like because um, D- Derry scored um, from a break yeah, from like, yeah. a corner um, and here's one that for you to think about over the break could a team not be far more adventurous when defending its own corner by putting players further up the pitch because not, not many corners go in that you're defending against but if you break from a corner and you have a sort of a three on four or a three on three you should have actually a very good chance of getting space yeah, but so if, it's, it's if you leave them up there then you're they're negating the space that you can run into this, as is, well, Johnny. this is the other thing so that, that's one for Laura to stew over as well in his <laughs> coaching okay match. got a look at the championship scores Blackburn Rovers 1 Sheffield United nil. Cardiff 2 Bristol City nil. these are results latest scores Blackpool nil. Burnley nil. Huddersfield nil. Coventry 1 Luton nil. Swansea nil, Middlesbrough one, Reading nil, Millwall one, Norwich nil, Rotherham one, QPR nil, uh, Sunderland nil, Stoke nil, Watford nil, Preston nil, Wigan nil, Birmingham City one, and uh, these are the scores of the Championship and in Scotland in the Premiership there. Rangers two 0 up against Kilmarnock, goalless between Ross County and Motherwell, Livingston one, Hibernian one, Hearts one, St Johnston nil. Jim Goodwin's uh, gone back in. That's yeah, the United yeah, they're well. playing later on, aren't they, against Aberdeen, his yeah. his former club. Uh, Shelburne four, Cork City nil in the SSE Artistry Women's National League. Megan Smith Lynch with two goals at Talker Park. They're into the second half. It is goalless between Galway United and Wexford Youths at Eamon DC Park. We're back after the break with football Saturday. Graham Garton and Johnny Ward in studio Mark Lawrence and on the line don't go away Welcome back to Football Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you through to five. This is Football Saturday. Remember, football and off the ball brought to you by Sky. Watch all the football you love, including the biggest Premier League games every weekend live on Sky. You can text us 53106 or tweet us at off the ball. We're streaming the conversation as well. You can listen on News Talk. Watch us as well on the digital channels on YouTube, Facebook, the OTB Sports app, and on Periscope and Twitter. We're joined on the line by the former Republic of Ireland and Liverpool defender Mark Lawrence and ex League of Ireland and FAI Cup winner Graham Gartland. And the broadcaster and journalist Johnny Warder in studio with me as well. Um, goals in the Premier League. Arsenal nil, Bournemouth 1. It was like Philip Billing got the goals, just a correction on that. Aston Villa 1, Crystal Palace nil. Joachim Anderson with an own goal. Brighton 1, West Ham nil. Ferguson starting for Brighton. Alexis McAllister scored from the spot. Chelsea still can't hit a barn door. Their goal is against Leeds. Wolves and Spurs nil nil. Southampton against Leicester is a half five start. Johnny Warder, were you. Um, I'm actually just I, I was just I was just about to say it and then I got a text in from Connor in Dublin Hi lads could Johnny confirm he wasn't the spy in Waterford during the week big result for <laughs> Shells last night I thought you Connor. had fake glasses on there as well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like Homer Simpson when he was on the jury um, <laughs> give me those and those so you, um, you're going to deny that you were the Galway United spy like and, and, and Waterford by the way never said that it was a Galway United yeah spy. and I, I, I have to be honest now I, I actually want, I don't 100% know what the story was here um, but if uh, Galway United um uh, affiliate or uh, anyone that had Galway United leanings were to have spied on the Watford training session, so what? Like, I've no issue with that. I mean, it's all about getting an edge here. Um, I believe the story actually went as far as Leeds because Bielsa Gate and all that, I think they they, they lapped it up. So you're not the spy? 
I was not I was not spoiled although I'd like to say I was because Galway United were brilliant from set pieces last night exposed Walter for time and time You could again. have had a future career in either spy in espionage or in set piece uh, uh, Well yeah or may- maybe maybe more the latter JD but um, set pieces are big uh, Galway United have signed Regan Donlan uh, he's, a, he's a very good left foot and scored from set piece but um, You could it, never be a spy Johnny It's an interesting job the opposition you tell people. I probably <laughs> would yeah. I probably, I'd I'm probably, working for MI6 now I'm, yeah. I'm down in London yeah. 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 I'm working for MI5 next um, week yeah, I've I've watched a watched a great uh, documentary there, a series called Tehran, which is all about Mossad agents and spies and the the life they live, and it's it's a it's a fairly scary world, but a big win. But the world of the opposition analyst must be an interesting job because it's a lot of travelling. You're going over watching teams and trying to get an edge on formations and all that. Yeah, yeah like, how would you feel if somebody now was. Um uh, up a tree with a, a camcorder and whatever they use now iPhones <laughs> ah yeah it's disingenuous it's not it's not in the spirit of the game like, ah. it isn't though it's like you know work it out yourselves do your instead of going all out and spying on you do your own research and your homework like you know it's, they were it's it's to be honest, Allegedly. like when you hear what Bell, it's it's done a lot on the continent rather than probably in in the UK and Ireland. But yeah, you'd be a little bit like you know have a bit more. Um, how would you say integrity? Yeah, re- integrity and respect for the for for the opposition and walk it out on the day if if you know a bit more of a gentleman's agreement to it than than what you're saying. I, I again, I don't I don't actually know what happened here, if anything happened at all. Um, but it does. If you do this, and if Galway United did do this, it obviously riles Watford up to you know later in the season get one over them. So there are risks to it if it did happen. But for me, it's like it, there's a bit of intrigue to it. It got all, it was all over the media, social media, the papers. Yeah, but no good news story doesn't mean it's right. Though, on the game, one nil scored from a set piece. Is that right though. Hmm? A good a good news story or a, a bit of interest in the story from I our, wouldn't do it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it, but, but I, I, I wouldn't said, be you just said you would. <laughs> no, I wouldn't no, I wouldn't do it if I were a coach, I'd be I'd be fairly by the book, but I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be getting uh, my high out. No, I wouldn't be getting on I'm not I wouldn't no. say that. I'm not outraged by it, but so I just you, don't you, think Yeah, it's you right. you have a thing with Galway United since uh, under fourteen <laughs> when that cup point there for <laughs> years. Yeah, ago. I know, yeah. Um under thirteens then was no, it? No, it was fourteen. It was fourteens, yeah. Graham has beef against Galway United since his star rovers team were Sorted that last year. <laughs> you don't. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. They won the game, so um, all's fair in love more. Nathan Collins not going to look in at Wolves at the moment, Graham. Uh, should he be worried, or is it just like it's just the, the vagaries of. No, I, I think it's the ups and downs of football. It, it's what happens. He's worried for Ireland, though, isn't not, it? A bit? Yeah, a little bit from that point of view. From a selfish point of view, it might be a worry from Ireland that you obviously want to see one of your top performers playing week in, week out. But there's ups and downs in football all the time. And in fairness to, to Nathan Collins, his career's been on such an upward trajectory for the last two years, and it's just a little blip. But from all accounts, and you and you you speak to people around Nathan, similar to the Evan Ferguson one, it's not his attitude or his commitment to the game that's gonna. It's not that's not gonna hinder him or let him down. Um, or anyway, so he has. He's come from a, a really good football and family that are gonna surround themselves and say, listen, these are the. These are these are the things that happen in football. One manager likes you, another one doesn't. You just got to knuckle down and earn your place back in the team, and you can only do that through hard work and showing a good attitude. If he doesn't do that, he's no chance of playing because they're gonna look at him and say you haven't handled disappointment well here. So uh, again, it's just a little blip. We've all gone through it as footballers, where a manager just doesn't take you, doesn't play you. What about the challenge of of being a centre back in a struggling team? Yeah, it's tough because you're exposed at times um, a certain aspects of the game. Um, it just might be that Labategui likes Dawson now, has brought him into the club, mm. doesn't necessarily... Well, it's hard, you can't say with def- any d- definition that he doesn't fancy Collins, but it's just that he's got his guy in now and, yeah. and he's decided you're the guy. Dawson and Kilman well, are going to be the centre-halves, you know? Well, he's bought experience, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what he's looking at. We don't, I mean, Dawson scored as well, then against Liverpool, wasn't that his first game? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's he's bought experience. You can understand that, can't you? Someone who's who's had years. Where was he been? Watford and all all those other places where, yeah, yeah they, they they've struggled. But he's and he's a real he's a, he's a heavy kick at centre back, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, we are closing in on the Latvia and France games, Shitty and. I didn't think I'd be saying this in early March. There are a lot of positions now where you wouldn't really be sure what Kenny, what formation he's going to play, who he's going to play, and uh, you know Collins will almost certainly play. I'd imagine, but you Darrow O'Shea has been playing regularly. He'll Darrow O'Shea has been playing. Egan's back in the team today for Sheffield United. Will he? I mean, he probably. Is, what about the goalkeeper? 
Yeah, he's been a bit rocky, isn't he? Yeah, he's, it was obviously the goal went in against Leeds. It wasn't it? Wasn't uh, probably his finest hour? But um, mm. I haven't seen much Southampton to say that. I mean, I, I've massive faith in Bazuna, but like our wing back positions look slightly up in the air as well to me. Either side, it's like, hard to be playing over. In I actually don't know. Yeah. And like Coleman's playing well, but he's not a wing back really at this stage of his life. Um, and on the left, maybe um, McLean. Maybe McLean, maybe Robbie Brady. I'm um, Ryan, Ryan Manning is Ryan is leaving well, yeah. to, uh, Swansea this season, but I I'm, I think as he might be slightly down the pecking order. Josh Cullen definitely starts, but I, thereafter a lot of questions, and I, I don't know. Maybe Kenny knows the answer. I saw he was interviewed by a uh, young aspiring journalist during the weekend, but I don't know. It's it's a tough one. You would like Collins to. Uh, I mean, if Collins goes into that game without having played for Wolves at all it, since he was dropped, it's not ideal. Um, Ogbeni, by the way, with an assist for uh, Rotherham's goal. Um, at home to QPR. Um, so that's a, a, a 1-0 lead for Rotherham. Uh, Shelburne now 5, Cork City nil in the Women's National League. Galway nil, Wexford nil. Uh, just in terms of... Uh, yes, Wexford have scored. Wexford Youths won, Galway nil. So that's the latest score, a, a breaking goal. Um, we have also goals in the Premier League. Uh, Arsenal still... Bizarrely, one nil down to Bournemouth. They haven't, uh, they haven't uh, exactly knocked the knocked the door down. No, either, they, 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 when Billion scored, they they did you know have a have a good crack at it, but they're still uh, conceding. Uh, Aston Villa won, Crystal Palace nil, Brighton won, West Ham nil, Chelsea nil, Leeds nil, Wolves nil, Spurs nil. Laro Graham Potter. I mean, the football management is crazy. We all know that, and he's a human being, and he's obviously he's feeling the heat a bit. But you'd wonder how long it can last. Yeah, un- un- unfortunately. Um... It's a real issue, and they've got Champions League, haven't they? It's a Tuesday, Wednesday this week. I would suggest, Dortmund, yeah. He, yeah, if he doesn't win either of them, I think that that will be no matter what uh, the guy who owns a football club thinks about him. I think the problem as well is 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 that he himself, at the moment, must just be really pulling his hair out. He's tried every different combination of players. Got they've got too many, which we know. All these different systems. Hasn't got a striker, can't score a goal. Um, and do you know what? For his mental health, John, he might be better out of it. That's a it's a that's a tough thing to say, but you can. I'm sure a lot of people would agree with you, Laura, and you know the toll on he and his family and um, the inability uh, after a long, long time it seems to actually get this going. When your mm-hmm. squad is that when your squad is that top heavy, uh, like they're so overloaded with players, every weekend you have probably. More unhappy players than happy players in your mm. in your building. That's a tough ask to walk into that every week. Is it as well? Like, is there is there a case where if the message isn't working, some players can say like, "Who are you?" Like, you know, you're not up to, you're not up to this mentally, even subconsciously, and just not buy into them. And then you're the rot is set. They're in. almost waiting. The thing about it, uh, they might be waiting for the next guy. Yeah. Mm. So there's a degree of well, you know, am I in the team or not? So I don't really care. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, and like the thing about Chelsea, you were certain Chelsea were crazy, right? But mm. Chelsea under Bramwich were crazy. But at least there was a certainty they're yeah. going to spend a lot of money. And if the manager ain't winning, he's out. out. Yeah. But now it just seems completely unpredictable. Where you, a Champions League winning manager in Tuchel, they got rid of him, mm. and he was a disciplinarian, and he wasn't involved, and he didn't want to get involved in the transfers. Then they buy about three hundred million players, put them all into a training ground, and say, "You got you work with this." Yeah. So no wonder it's going to go wrong. Mm. Yeah. The, the other thing, John didn't didn't. Uh, they come out with a statement the other day, Chelsea, that the, the players under Tuchel, the pre-season training, was it was a disaster. Yeah. So, I mean, w- w- where does that come from? Not, normally you get a new manager takes over and says, oh, well, you know, they, they don't look fit enough, which is ridiculous, But because obviously they're tested day in, day out. But it, they, they were just saying from within the camp that, that pre-season training was a disaster. Well, I would say not buying a centre-forward was a disaster. Mm. That's more effective than a yeah. Dan is Dan is listening in as well. Um, he points out that he's never he's never off work. Dan, he's at uh, give a shout out to Enda, who's a big fan of the show. Dan is at um, I believe might be at his stag this weekend. So con- congratulations to Enda on uh, getting as far as the stag at least. Hope a good time <laughs> in Edinburgh. Um, knowing laugh there from Laurel. Um, Doherty hasn't played yet. Maybe this weekend, and Odawa is starting wing back as well. And I know Kenny's been a big fan of him. So you could conceivably say there are five players. I think the Stevens. I'm not sure if he's back from injury yet. There are five players and that left wing back Bert alone do we definitely play three at the back against France I, I don't know uh, who starts 
up top, presumably Ferguson does. does I wouldn't, Ferguson fan, start I wouldn't fancy home? playing right wing back against, against Mbappe. France. But like, say, yeah. So say, who's <laughs> what? What are we going to do about Mbappe? Like, because not, not, in fairness, neither Darty nor Coleman is is quick enough for Mbappe. But who is? Yeah. No. So I don't know. The, the, yeah. We not, take inspiration from Bournemouth right now, leading one 0 away yes. to Arsenal. We put um, uh, ten men behind the ball, and we hope for the best, and we hope. No, for no, no. I, I, it's not. It's not going to be like that. And I think France aren't amazingly like. You know, Ferguson has already done well against Canate, for example. Right, so I wouldn't be afraid of France necessarily in the back four, and they're coming off the World Cup. There might be a little bit of a down. They might be on a little bit of a downer. I don't think it's going to be um, domination from France, but we do have problems with Kylian Mbappe, as anyone would. And I don't know, you know, Kenny won't be saying let's let's park the bus here because that'll deny Mbappe space. But at the same time, you can't play high if Mbappe is on the team because if you lose the ball, you're in big trouble straight away. Five three one zero six. Uh Kenny's the biggest Liverpool legend, but unfortunately he started the decline. Sonny, Jimmy Carter, David Speedy, etc. says Brian in Dublin. It's his birthday today, John. Kenny. Yeah. Well, happy birthday for listening, Kenny Douglas. Um, I wouldn't think he'd be sure listening, Kenny but Douglas. I'll pass it on. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's not listening to us on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and it's, it may, in fairness, that, that texture, it may be simplistic to say it was all soon as his fault. Maybe he, he inherited a team in decline, which he probably did, um, but yeah. he hastened it. Uh, is this Liverpool radio, says Paul and Cork? No, it's not. We just have an interesting debate around tactics, formations, and Laro did play for Liverpool and did win five league titles, so it was interesting. Who was that, te- who was that text from, uh, uh, from Paul and Cork? Paul and Cork. Oh. We're going to talk a lot about Man United after four. Yeah, you, I, I don't know what age Paul is, but you, you kind of got to understand as well when I when I was um, a kid how big Liverpool were. Like it was Man United were a secondary, and Liverpool. Everyone seemed to Liverpool was the team. Because, I would argue that Liverpool is the biggest supporter club in this country. Yeah, and there's that Irish connection, which and, and, and I know that probably would upset a lot of League of Ireland fans, but I, I just think it's the reality. But, of it. to, but we're also know, talk, no, we're also talking to some to somebody who's played at the club, and we're talking about formations, and we're asking. Like he's like Mark Lawrence touched on them change of formation to play in Europe, but it was just natural that they done it. And we talked about Real Madrid having a spine, and then Lawrence touches on the fact that Liverpool walked off their spine. So not much has changed in thirty years no. of football. Yeah, and that's that was just to emphasise the fact. It's not mm. we're talking from somebody else's experience that happens to be at Liverpool. Yeah, if um, Brian Robson was on, we'd be asking him what what was it like at Man United so it's, it's all almost, relative you saw the amazing Chippy Brady documentary I hope and you know Arsenal had these Irish players then Liverpool had the Irish players and this was a time when English football was starting to come on the TV a lot and the League of Ireland was in serious decline so Irish football fans mostly had an English team and a hell of a lot of them loved Steve Staunton and you know the Irish players Houghton and Wheeling okay. and so on Got and, take and a, John Aldridge Take a break Johnny Ward Graham Gartland and Mark Lawrence on Football Saturday here on Off the Ball We'll just go through the scores before we go to the news uh, Manchester City 2 Newcastle nil is a result Arsenal nil, Bournemouth won at half time so what a result that could be for the Cherries Aston Villa 1 Crystal Palace nil. Brighton won West Ham nil. Evan Ferguson starting uh, Chelsea nil, Leeds nil, and Wolves nil. Spurs nil. and in the Championship Blackburn 1 Sheffield United nil a result Cardiff 2 Bristol City nil a result half time scores Blackpool nil, Burnley nil, Huddersfield nil, Coventry 1 Luton 1 Swansea nil, Middlesbrough 2 Reading nil. it is Millwall 1 Norwich 1 Rotherham 1 QPR nil. Sunderland nil. Stoke 1 Watford nil. Preston nil. Wigan nil. Birmingham City 1 in Scotland Rangers Lee Kilmarnock 3 nil at the break Ross County nil. Motherwell nil. Livingston 1 Hibernian 2 Hearts 1 St Johnston nil. and in the Women's National League Shelburne have thumped Cork City by six goals to nil and Wexford Hughes have won away to go in added by one goal to nil. We're back after four with Laro, Graham Gartland and Johnny Warden on Football Saturday if you want to text us 53106. Well, Saturday here on News Talk John Duggan with you three to five this evening. This is Football Saturday. Remember Football and Off the Ball brought to you by Sky. Get all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. You can text us 53106. Tweet us at Off the Ball. We're streaming the conversation. Listen across the country on your radio and News Talk. Also watch us if you'd like on YouTube, Facebook and uh, Twitter and on the OTB Sports app. Join on the line by the Republic of Ireland and Liverpool legend Mark Lawrence and in studio by the ex-League of Ireland and FAI Cup winner Graham Gartland and the broadcaster and journalist Johnny Ward, uh, 53106. If anybody uh, has got any doubts about how good Liverpool team of the 80s were, they should check out the magazine 442. They did a survey of the best club sides and best overall sides of all time. Liverpool were voted in the top six in both every time. It's right to talk about them, especially with a former player on, says Niall. Uh, we also have... Um, Scores going in, goals going in uh, around the block. Uh, Arsenal, Lil Bournemouth won still. Nine seconds it took Philip Billing to score. And the Cherry still in front of the league leaders who now have a two-point cushion over Man City after their win over Newcastle 2-0. Villa won, Palace nil. Brighton won, West Ham nil. 
Wolves nil, Spurs nil, Chelsea nil, Leeds nil. Laro, are United now top dogs in the Liverpool United rivalry? Yeah, yeah, no arguments at the moment. Um, as we know, Ten, ten Hag's done a, a fabulous job, and I think the first of which was obviously sorting the dressing room out, which he's, he's got. He's got one or two of his own players in. Also, I was I was reading about him the other week. I didn't realise his uh, his parents had um, uh, sold houses. I think I'm presume in, a, in 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 the Netherlands and things. And he was. They said to him. His dad said to him, "When you leave school, you'll come into the business." And he said, "No." I don't want to. I want to, I want to make my own way in life. So that obviously tells you something about him. I think the rest of the kids all joined the company. But uh, he, he's done a, a fab job. I mean, his signings, as we know, have been, been outstanding, of, of which everybody's raving about Casemiro, and, and rightly so. I think Martinez as well. I love watching him play because he, he just he, he'd kick, he'd kick his granny, wouldn't he? He's, he's one of those Argentine players who just like uh, take a yellow. It's not an issue. What's the problem? Uh, and he's, you know, the fact he's got Rashford scoring goals is, is massive for them. But they just look a, a good side now. Um, Baran seems to be much fitter than he's been before. The goalkeeper's in really good form as well. And when you look all around the team, I mean, they're not the finished article by 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 quite a way, but they've obviously got conference and a very, very difficult team to beat. And I mean, I'm at the game tomorrow. It'll just be interesting to see what they're like because... Whatever you've thought about Liverpool this year, generally, in quite a lot of the big games at home, they've actually raised the standards. And, you know, Jota's back, Van Dijk's back, etc. Uh, looks like, um, who else? Fabinho starting to look like a, a bit like himself again. So it'll be, a, it'll be an interesting game. I think there'll be loads of tackles flying in. Who do you think are the bookies' favourites, Laurel? I reckon, I reckon, draw. John, you want to say something there? It's uh, Liverpool. Right. Liverpool are favourites, yeah. I mean, they've gone on a run of four games without conceding in the league, which mm-hmm. I, mean, I would have given you a billion to one that would happen the way they've been defending. Um, and now they've, they've been playing some pretty... They played Palace, they played Wolves, they played Everton, and I can't remember who the other one was, but they've, they've been on a... Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle, who had 10 men and they didn't play well in that game. I mean, I, yeah. I'd more judge them on... I think Real Madrid against Barca the other night barely had a shot on target and they hit five in Anfield. And I don't think this is a great Real Madrid side. So I'm not sure about Liverpool. I think what Laura says about the players coming back, I know Firmino's leaving in the summer, but Jota coming back is massive, I think. Um, yeah. was brilliant for the Van Dijk goal the other night. Just really good. He's added vibrancy yeah. to, to the attack. In fairness to Salah, Laura, I, I think he's had a six... At max seven out of ten season, but his goals record is still twenty very, goals in all competitions. Still twenty goals. It's like what? No. Um, so, but you know me- what? What I think about that a little bit though, and I would, I would um, be quite critical of him as well. Certainly, at different times and different seasons when it was all about him scoring. But you know, it must be very, very difficult to to, to play with two guys that you, you've never really played with Absolutely. before. And Nunes um, as well. Laro is kind of like he's not. He's probably not the most straightforward player to play alongside because he's all there. Yeah, no, absolutely, and um, but I, I, do, I do, I am convinced by him that he's going to, he's going to be a top player, and um, but Jota, Jota back is is important. But can that day, can that day coming back? I mm, thought was important mm. as well. Yeah, I think Gomez, yeah, yeah. Is, I think Gomez has really struggled. Um, yeah, mind, Mickey, mind you, you know. the, the only thing is we're looking, we're looking at that. That was against Wolves, who I mean can't hit a bar, a bar with a banjo at the moment. They are poor, Laura. Like it, the the, the midfield that is inside, still that that channel that Rashford's going to play in. Yeah. You need nice. like you need you need somebody, especially with Trent Alexander and the form that Rashford's in. He's on fire at the uh, moment. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd be fancy. I'd be fancy Man United, honestly, because I just think Liverpool's form is is slightly flattering. But the the bottom line is with the way Newcastle. There's just one thing here: midfield. Mm. United mm-hmm. at the moment of a better midfield. Casemiro, I like one hundred percent. Liverpool, Liverpool have actually quite a weak midfield and over. And I, in fairness to Klopp. I, I, I don't think he really knows himself. He's brought in... Harvey Elliott played the other night, played well. He's brought in players, young players, who Baitis has done well as well. But, like, Thiago hasn't really been a success. Fabinho sort of lost form. Henderson's legs look like they're Aisha, half gone. No. Keita just hasn't really worked out. So, in fairness to Klopp, I think he's tried things. But the bottom line, JD, is your beloved Spurs, um, <laughs> seven points ahead of... <laughs> seven points ahead of Liverpool. Liverpool have two games in hand. And to be fair to Newcastle, Newcastle are a wobbling. So, Liverpool's top four ambitions... Spurs are a disgrace, anyway. Spurs so are a disgrace. But Liverpool, on your day, hasn't he? Liverpool 
have um, that was a that was a nice pivot. That Liver- was, uh, <laughs> like uh, obviously you're, you're taking dancing lessons on weekends. Liverpool January. have uh, very genuine top four ambitions, and the gap to Man United might be ten, but their top four ambitions are definitely realistic. Another at Allison moment. moment at the end of the season. Uh, yeah. Nathan, Nathan be commentating on another Allison had a goal to get them in the Champions League. I think this this game has so much going for it. Are Man United in the title race? Probably not. Um, but if Arsenal drop points in and Man United win tomorrow, whatever it is, it, it almost is that changing of the guard now. Are Man United think- back on top of that duel? Do you think? Again, which do, you think you, do you think United go and like go for it? No, but that's exactly. Play on the pace. No, play on the pace. Play on the break. But they, on the break. that's how they beat them at Old Trafford. They beat yeah. Liverpool at Old Trafford by playing on the counter attack. Yeah, Liverpool are very, very so vulnerable. Exactly. So do do United go and say, well, the four more team are going to go and become a counter attacking team against us because that's what that's how we won it at Anfield. Oh, that's how we won it at Old Trafford. Well, but, that's that's the way they set up, isn't it, yeah. Man U? So again, Don't going to Anfield is still a tough place to go, but. Obviously, I just think Liverpool give up too many chances. Thank game. God it's not one of them stupid early Saturday games as well. It's or, red, four, or a red half, Monday. Yeah, or red. Now, I don't mind Monday nights, but half four on a Sunday to be a cracking officer. Laura, it's, it, what's it like at Anfield at the moment? Because I, I think, um, you know, I, I was funny, I was at a game, it, League of Ireland first finished level last night, but I was amazed after 15 minutes how the Waterford crowd were totally getting on the backs of players. And in fairness to Liverpool, they've enjoyed success. They're like, they seem to have given Klopp very much the benefit of the doubt about what's been a disappointing season. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, I'm, well, I go, I go to every home game. So, um, no, the, the, the atmosphere is really, really good, in all honesty. And, and I think... Look, the world and his wife know what the problems are. And, and I think John just shouted there, saying about, you know, midfield. I'm absolutely, totally. And I think, you know, the, the script a, a, away from the game is that it, it'll be a revolving door in the summer in terms of lots out and lots in. Will they get that in them, Laura? Will they get that in them? I have no idea, John, honestly. They, they seem to, from what I can gather, it's Bellingham's mum and dad would like him to come and play for Liverpool because they, they very much like Klopp and they think he will very much look after him, etc. Um, you don't know, dear. Did he go you, for Declan Rice? Um, <laughs> I, wish, I wish they would. Um, really? Yeah. I don't would you? Would you? Would you? I don't know. I mean, is he? He's not. Like, is he? This, is he quick enough to kind of be that engine room? Or the Liverpool have so many problems. Though. I don't even know what midfield they actually want. But like, would Rice suit? You know what? Well, um, yeah. Because I think he's a player. But I, I would. I'm, I'm guilty of this, which is when when Alden said he was going, I just thought, well, go on then. You know. But you look at him now, and I used to think. What did you actually do? Yeah. And now all of a yeah. sudden, when he's not there, I, I'd be the same with Mane on that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, man, yeah. Um, man, or Mane rather, yeah. yeah. The, in fairness, so, um, the the the, the texture, sorry, like the texture is going to be accused. I know. Be right right against, so I, I have to say, like what Ten Hag has done. No, at this no but, club. You, but you could see the other night against West Ham. He didn't have Casemiro or Martinez or Rashford on from the mm. start. Once he brought them on, you could see the the key yeah. players. Yeah. And, this, and that's what you need. You need those three to four key players in uh, the team. But he and also Van Especially Anfield tomorrow, mm. you need, because it'll be it'll be it'll be big steel and bite one. It? It'll be everybody diving all over the place, tackles flying in, and all those kind of things. By the way, did you see um, did you see the money that was uh, Oxley Chamberlain was on? <sighs> no, he does have a double no. bar name, I suppose. What is it? Hundred and eighty thousand pounds a week. Which is just as much as Laro you're getting for this show this afternoon. Yeah, uh, just take, take seven yeah. off it. The, the, Chelsea have scored. Um, there we go. Everything's wow. okay again, and it's um, subject to VAR. Subject to VAR. Um, no, but no, this one is okay. It's Wesley Fofana, defender, who's got the goal, and Brighton are two 0 up now in West Ham. Joel Veltman with the second goal. The, this is important. Well, as well. Arsenal for, still behind one 0 Ferguson leading the line today, even if he's not scoring. They're two 0 up. Brighton are having a great season, but in terms of Ten Hag, when you come in and you can play the tough guy, you're coming into a dressing room with all these millionaires, Ronaldo's of this world, really, really underperforming team and he could not have pulled this off better. He, he eased Ronaldo out in a way that worked for seemingly every party. Maguire. Um, Maguire, obviously, I think that's, I think they're almost equally significant um, but the, the mentality change in the team is incredible and I've said this time and time again, this is a never-ending carousel of fixtures. There's one after the other if you're in all the competitions Man United are in this season and they're, they're just, they keep performing and I think it's a major test for Liverpool tomorrow. I, I'd be very I'd be very pessimistic on their chances, but I've been eighteen wrong wins before. in twenty-two games for Man United. He's done an unbelievable yeah. job. We we spoke about it here about like bringing a consistency of the environment and changing that culture around the club. That like players want consistency. They want consistency in their discipline. They want consistency in their training. They want the consistency in the demands that's put on them. Every player will thrive in that. 
And if you're not going to be in that, then you'll know players going in know I have to bring X, Y, and Z every day in training. And if the drops, then that's on me as a player. And the consequences of that are you're not going to play. And when that's there for everyone in the squad, there's a fairness that comes with it as well that all the players embrace that and go, well, we're all getting treated similar because we all have these demands that are putting us and we all have to meet these demands. So the player beside you can go, listen, you need to get going here. This is what's demanded of us in this club. That wasn't there until Ten Hag came back in. Players were able to seemingly do, behave and act the way they wanted at certain times and, and he's brought a discipline to it. On top of that yeah. then, his tactical nous has been really good. Some of his substitutions have been brilliant, but the starting point was that just changing that culture that we're all in this together and we're all going to do it together and nobody's above the discipline and the structures in the club and that's the starting point for any big, for any successful organisation not just in football do you know what I, I think, what it, I I think as well. well I don't know if, if you can attest this Laura sorry to interrupt but I, the, well, the, yeah. the, 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 the difference in the atmosphere at Old Trafford now compared yeah. to Barcelona game wow yeah for several years even I think the atmosphere was, it's been the moon yeah, it's I, I I don't know, Laura. It's it's it, I I'd be I'd be a stop for nostalgia, but like when I grew up, Old Trafford obviously was a very noisy place uh, from from mm. watching on TV, and it, it is again. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's it's rocking, and I think the other point you you all make really good points. So the other point I would make about Ten Hag is 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 rotated really yeah. really mm. well. So it's given everybody in the squad a chance of playing. Bournemouth have scored a second. Arsenal nil. Bournemouth two in the Premier League at the Emirates. Unbelievable stuff. What is going on, JD? Sorry. Every time... Brilliant. Apologies. Every time he Mark tries to make a point, we get... I had to interrupt him. Oh, Sorry. Listen, I'd, rather, I'd rather listen to that than me and put myself to sleep. But listen, so he's, he, is, he is doing a fabulous job. You can, just, you can just tell by looking at him and listening to him in his press conferences... He, he takes no prisoners, but you know he's very, very fair. But he's also one of them, which is, look, if you play for me, I will look after yeah. you. It's, it's it's etched in his face. Yeah, and the fans can the fans have really taken to the the the, the kind of attitude of the team as well. They're a very, very honest team, and mm. the resurgence of Rashford, I think, in the context of the. The, you know, he was a quarter of a player last season. Has been great to watch, and uh, what what a game! What a what a way to spend your Sunday to watch that. I game. think it's Marco Sinesi. It's from a corner, a header from a corner for Bournemouth, and they're two 0 up now away to Arsenal. Remember, City won earlier on against Newcastle, and if this stays the way it is, Arsenal will only have a two point lead on City, and they've got to go to City. Yeah, I, again, we've had these pivotal games. If Arsenal can turn this around, it's in another of these games. Like Bad, they shouldn't, shouldn't be in this position against Bournemouth no, but they, at they, home. They haven't, had, they haven't had loads of chances, and Bournemouth have, have done a smash and grab on it, and half an hour to go will be it's an S, yes. Desperation an in Arsenal here, that they're not playing with patience. That it's interesting, he changed midfield today. He brought yeah. Vieira and Party. Well, Party should be playing, but he brought Vieira and Party into the midfield today. You see, the Russian, you can see, it reminds me of when Liverpool playing Chelsea are, Anfield that time and there's a desperation in them from the start and you're like just be patient in the game it'll come to you your chances will come yeah you want to force it but not to the point where you become impatient with it this is Football Saturday on Off the Ball on News Talk for your Saturday afternoon. Laro, Graham Gartland, and Johnny Ward. Um, fa- like the fans of Liverpool United and other planes will be full tomorrow uh, from this country going to Anfield, and that's just the way it is. Um, your favourite game you've been at, you've attended, well, your best experience of a Liverpool Man United game? Love to get in touch uh, or to hear your, your views. Still the, biggest game, it's still the biggest game in the calendar, isn't it? Well, it's not really. Like, in term- it, it is in terms of kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like know. Arsenal, Arsenal, Man City will have more. It's, on it's, it's, this a, year. it's the biggest game in English football. Yeah, but is it the bigger game than Barcelona Real Madrid? Is it the biggest game in English football? I mean, ah, I'd say absolutely. No, I think I would. I would say it's the most watched game yeah. in English yeah. football. Yeah, like we'll the, big, the, 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 the biggest game can change. It could be like yeah, at yeah. the moment it's yeah. Arsenal City, and then yeah, in exactly. recent years it's been uh, City and Liverpool. I mean, yeah, yeah and the, the magic of those games and that that three all at Anfield that I mentioned. I mean. Did the cop the, before the days the seats were brought in and the noise at Anfield that night when Liverpool pull off the problem? Arsenal need to do something similar now. Two all game when Fowl- Fowler scores yeah. the two absolute worldies. But that was when Cantona, Cantona scores made his comeback. Start to the band. Yeah. yeah, but everybody talks about Cantona's penalty and Robbie Fowler's two goals are unbelievable in the game. He lobs Schmeichel with one of them and he bangs one front post. He was brilliant. I got to ask you as well, Laurel. That comes on and steals the, and show, steals the show. Robbie, I remember that game vividly and I uh, think this Liverpool team's going places, which brings me on to you, Laurel, on the latest. Uh, episode of Liverpool TV um, <laughs> what, was Roy Evans the gentleman that he always came across as yeah but is Roy Evans even 
But but he he did have he had a little bit of steel in there as well. He wasn't frightened of making a decision. But yeah, yeah, lovely lovely guy. He, my family and his family used to go away to uh, to Spain every end of the season, I, I, and it wasn't. You know, you think it might be frowned upon a player going away with with the coach and, and the family and all that, but no, nobody ever bothered. Him. And he was, I tell you what, Roy was really good at. He was, if you had a problem, you'd go to him. You wouldn't go to the manager. You wouldn't go to Joe Fagan. You wouldn't go to Ronnie Ryan. You'd go to you go to Evo because he was a little bit younger and probably, um, you know, he, he he was the voice of reason. But he did a, he did have. He did have a steely side to him. And it, the problem was, I mean, with those, you know, the FA Cup final with the suits and all that kind of stuff and one thing and another. And, you know, we, we all had that, but we didn't actually have an idiot in charge who decided what suit they were going to wear. Yeah. Yeah, the thing about Evans as well, yeah, but it, it, you'd have to talk about the suits. If they win the game, you never hear. Yeah, the suits. it was it was a hard. The suits would be positive. If they a, win the but game. You, you got Liverpool didn't they didn't win the league under Roy Evans. They, they you know they had success yeah. in the FA Cup, but Roy Evans introduced three at the back. He put Ro, uh, John Barnes into a central midfield position, and Liverpool started to revolutionise football a little bit in England at that time, where teams started to play three at the back. They passed the ball, passed the ball, passed the ball, passed the ball, and Liverpool were a very good side under Roy Evans. And what he inherited, were they to go on to win the Premier League, was going to be a huge ass. But he made them a much better team than they were under Sunas. So I wouldn't go as far as to say the revolution. The, the, the three at the back, he certainly was a big like three at the back became in vogue that time. Roy Evans certainly had a role in that. Yeah, Liverpool, yeah, Liverpool had so you had McAteer on one end, Bjornby on the other, um, and that's you know, not but, like again I not revolutionised. Yeah. But Liverpool were a very very good team to watch. And and that day that uh, Graham mentions when they went to Old Trafford and nearly won, they were becoming um, a torn in Man United side again. Uh, we have Arsenal nil, Bournemouth two, a latest score in the Premier League. Aston Villa one, Crystal Palace nil, Brighton two, West Ham nil, Chelsea one, Leeds nil, Wolves nil, Spurs nil. Southampton Leicester is a half five start. Uh, Blackburn Rovers one, Sheffield United nil, a result from the Championship. Cardiff beat Bristol City two nil. Latest scores: Blackpool nil, Burnley nil, Huddersfield nil, Coventry three, Luton one, Swansea nil, Middlesbrough four, Reading nil, Millwall one, Norwich two. It's Rotherham one, QPR nil, Sunderland. Are trailing Stoke by three goals to nil. Watford nil, Preston nil, Wigan one, Birmingham one. Arsenal have pulled one back, and it's Thomas Partey who's got the goal. Arsenal one, Bournemouth two in the Premier League, and a long, long time to go. You mentioned the Coventry score as well. Uh, so just because Dan isn't here to slag me that I mention Coventry every week, but their their march to the playoffs goes on with that three 0 lead at Huddersfield. They're absolutely flying it at the moment. And um, the championship race is exciting, but so is this, JD. It's another set piece goal as well. Yeah. Won't be a var issue. I it think it was a here. mistake from Neto. Only punched the ball into the air. Flicked back in and then Party was there close range to finish it. Yeah. 62 minutes on the watch. Arsenal won Bournemouth 2 in the Premier League here on off the ball but, Saturday. When I was a kid, the thought of like being on a live show where you're bringing the scores to the nation on a, on a Saturday would have like, I would have been nice. This, this is the Gillette Soccer Saturday. This is the Gillette. <laughs> and it's times like this but, where yeah. we have a real title race and Arsenal are 2 0 down and they've gotten one back in the half. But the good thing is Gillette sponsor OTBAM and Sky Sports sponsor this for show. For a clean so, shave. Uh, spo- yeah. Sky Sports sponsor this show. Uh, Laura, um, one thing I suppose maybe a little bit underplayed is Steve McLaren role with Ten Hag because at FC 20 like a club that you'd never expect to win the Dutch League they won it when Ta- Ten Hag was his assistant a decade ago yeah. and Emma McLaren's back in there with him well I, I when I managed Oxford not for long until I fell out with, out with Maxwell I gave Steve a job <laughs> don't talk about Maxwell just, Michelle, <laughs> yeah just coaching with the kids and everything but um, yeah no he's, he's actually he's, Steve McLaren is really well liked in the game um, um, you know He's been everywhere, if you look at it as well, and, and the teams he's managed, etc. Um, obviously got you know the Wally and the, with the Brawley at, at Liverpool. Uh, sorry, um, Wembley and all those kind of things. But he, he knows he knows very much where he's at, and I, I, he's obviously a, a very very clever an appointment. And you know when you think we talk about Ten Hag, how, how clever is that? So the guy that he was used to train under him, uh, you know, as a coach, has now reversed the role. I, I think it's great, and he won't. They'll know each other really, really well. And I would, I would say, in the first six months of this season, he's been invaluable to Ten Hag. Um, so I think it's a, a really, really good appointment. It's amazing that it some, somebody does something where everyone sees it, like the Wally with the Broly, and you, you never ever live it down, do you? Mm. <laughs> the fact that you keep calling it that as well yeah. probably isn't helping. Well, no, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Good example in life, though, to kind of you, you will have setbacks, you will be ridiculed, but like, ah, you know, there is always. Hey, boys. Graham Taylor, yeah. Graham Taylor, yeah. doc, that Graham Taylor documentary killed him as well, mm-hmm. the, the one that and, he brought out, you know. 
I'm Phil Neal. I'm Phil Neal, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then yeah. you make but it. I've got a good one. I've got a good one for you to talk about. I, I, I'm pretty sure you, you won't have heard this one before. But Just make sure it's so okay, Laura. Make sure it's okay. Go on. It is okay. No, I'm still out of the evening. <laughs> Let Laura be the judge of that, JD. <laughs> and we were, so we were doing the results for the BBC, me and uh, Ray Stubbs. Our final score, say, right, we came off at half five. And this is when um, the BBC were in, were in London at the Horseshoe Place and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it was where all the. The shows were going on, the programmes, all those kind of things. Me and Stubbsy, so we'd finished at half five and we came we, we came off air and we used to go and just have one beer upstairs before we went home or I used to go and do match a day and stuff. Anyway, we were walking down the, the horseshoe and as we were walking down, Stubbsy just nudged me and he went straight ahead, Tom Jones, I went and seen him. And so we kind of walked towards him and, and that we're thinking, shall we say anything or not? Anyway, as we walked towards him, he just said, Hey boys, how did Cardiff get on? And Stubbsy went, I got beat 2 1. You know what he said? Not unusual. It's not unusual. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I couldn't stop laughing for 10 minutes. It was not unusual and just kept walking. That's, that is honestly the best story I've ever heard. I don't know if it's true, but I believe Lawrence. It is true. <laughs> it's true. How, how, how could you make well, that up? It's too, how could you make that it's too up? outlandish to be true, but it this probably is, is you, true. This is why you couldn't be a spoy, Johnny. And this is why uh, speaking to Lara on Football Saturday is like riding a mechanical bull. Yeah, We're back yeah. after this. Phenomenal. <laughs> Football Saturday, remember, football and off the ball brought to you by Sky. Get all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. You can text us 53106, Mark Lawrence on the line with Graham Gartland and Johnny Warden Studio. Arsenal have equalised, Arsenal 2, Bournemouth 2. They were 2-0 down, but Ben White, the defender, has made it 2-2. He's equalised for the Gunners at the Emirates Stadium. Remember, Man City beat Newcastle 2-0 earlier on. 70 minutes on the watch of the Emirates and Arsenal on the attack. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's such a quick turnaround, JD. Two goals in 10 minutes, very hard to see them not score. Now, big day in the title race, and um, Evan Ferguson hasn't scored, but that is some result. Three nil. That Brighton, bad Brighton are leading West Ham. West Ham are never safe, are they? They're one of those mm. clubs in the Premier League. They always seem to to struggle at times in the Premier League. And Matoma got the third goal after goals by McAllister and Veltman. Chelsea have scored today. One nil. They lead Leeds at Stamford Bridge. Wesley of a fan on the mark. Wolves nil. Spurs nil. And it's Crystal Palace trailing Aston Villa. Villa one. Palace nil. Palace down to ten men. They've had a player sent off. Joachim Anderson with an own goal uh, to put Villa in front. And uh, decore has gone for a second yellow. That was one of the earliest games I went to as a player, as a kid. I went to Chelsea. Me, me Uncle Harry took me to London to see Arsenal versus Man United. And we went, we were in the clock end. And then um, the following clock day, end, yeah. the following day he says, let's go. Uh, the following day he says to me, we, there's another game on, let's go. And I was like, where are we going? He's like, Chelsea Leeds and I was like told us this, oh, I was yeah. sort of going this is a bit mad yeah. <laughs> carnage but Andy Townsend scored in the, for in Chelsea. the shed was it or yeah walking around the shed and just the shout you hear I was thinking what's that it was only 10 um, but um, a fella stood in front of us my uncle Harry had to say to him listen you need to move like and your man's once <laughs> around has a go or us about being Irish and I could feel my uncle Harry trying to get at him but uh, Andy Townsend scored Commodore jersey oh, it was only yeah. later on that I realised when I got home my, da- my dad was like what you went to Chelsea Leeds, like, and I was going, yeah. And then he's like, "That's historically a really sort of that mad uncle, game." Uncle to go on to. the dad side or the mum <laughs> side? The, the mum side. <laughs> and he's like, he was a Chelsea fan, and he was like, "But outside, then there's carnage." I just remembered. Come on, we went into the Chelsea club shop. Horses just going by. It was just absolute. But the memory of just Andy Townsend scoring. And being or even being Irish and running over to this corner and proper celebrating. working class game in those days. Oh, the tickets yeah. were probably whatever a couple of bucks like in yeah, the battle yeah. days. Yeah, mm. but there was the it was the old Stamford Bridge with the cars parked behind the mm. like the the big space behind the goal, the bowl and all. Yeah, it was just I was it was only later on I went. How did I go to Chelsea Leeds game? How did that happen? Two two uh, Arsenal Bournemouth. You were at uh, the Rovers game both of you last night. Were you? I was in Watford. You actually. Was, yeah, Graham was at. Yeah, I I just I just came on like I came home last night at like twelve o'clock or something and I I put on the game and that's um, dedication. Milk had, and cookies, Johnny. Was it? Had um. Well, I had a had a Watford whiskey actually. I was given, right. I was given. I'd never heard of Watford whiskey. Was it the Spy this. Edition? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> It's not unusual, JD. <laughs> it was the moustache. So, uh, we had a moustache on. So I was like, how have I missed this insta opportunity here? Like, you've won a game in Galway United, have won a game in Watford, came back on the bandwagon last night after a brief hiatus, big win, and uh, the Watford whiskey. I was into the bottle, but I was enjoying the whiskey. I uh, had a couple of glasses, and then I said, I'll watch the end of the game. Like, so I watched the whole game. This was definitely, in my view, 
the best advertising for the League of Ireland that I've ever seen. It was a full Tala Stadium, and um, the pitch was pristine. But mainly, JD, it was such an enjoyable game to watch. The the intricacy of the passing, very good goals. You had Patrick McElhenney, who's possibly the best player in the league at the moment. He's getting a run of games. Will Patching, um, say on Ryan Graydon will say um, O'Neill for Derry, and then Rovers have Graham Burke, Jack Byrne, um, Dylan Watts. Um, Poom, son of Mark Poom in midfield, a bit of a technician set up the Rovers equaliser. Um, there was so much quality in the game and I spoke to uh, a few people who wouldn't really go along to League of Ireland games who were at the game, they really enjoyed it and I was like, if this is where the League of Ireland needs to be, we're not that far off. But it was such a such an enjoyable game to watch. Graham would probably say I'm wrong now. I don't, I th- he thinks I disagree with him all the time. Why, why, why have Rovers started the season so slowly? Played well last night. They played well last night, they done really well, they, they had moments against Strata where they were excellent and as I think Stephen Bradley touched on it, if they take the chances that they're outside, uh, discipline has cost them um, a little bit in terms of too many three red cards in their opening three ga- in their opening two games all which centre-backs. all centre backs they bring in centre backs last night Sean Hoare's obviously struggling fitness wise he came on and played the last 15 minutes last night so it's, it's a good sign um, it, wa- it was a decent game to watch um, it was a great advertisement in fairness Derry brought down 500 fans Rovers filled the rest of their allocation fantastic venue fantastic pitch really good footballers on play and the technical ability from the players was fantastic I do agree I thought Patrick McElhenney was excellent um, John Kenny scores a wonderful goal actually the 32nd goal is really well worked oh, the ball from Patching Patching's little ball he, he tries to scoop one originally it doesn't come off and then he plays one on the inside of the full back McGonagall just pops out and it's a really classy finish from him because he, he, he probably it was his only shot on goal, I think he had in the in the evening McGonagall, so he was working off maybe not a lot of service, but I thought there he showed uh, a professionalism to them in the game, especially when they went two one up that they just killed the game. Um, they they seen the game out where last year that they had gone to they had gone to Rovers and probably been the better side and yeah. lost. Where um, this this time Rovers were probably a little bit on the better a little bit of the better of the game. Better to the chances, better possession, but it's there, he, there he gets the win. If you're if you're looking at players that might kind of step up to either um, another level in England or maybe even Ireland, you're looking at Neil Ferruja last night, and we, you know we spoke about formations, JD, in that article in the Times, like the, the, York I, Times, the yeah. idea of the inverted winger, so a really really left footed player, really left footed player, like he barely ever uses his right foot playing on the right now has become a thing. Stephen Bradley's a big fan of it, and Ferruja, um he has so much pace, like he's so athletic. Uh, uh, yeah, you still think he's he's an unpolished diamond yet. How far will he go? I know Stephen Kenny's a fan, and what what's the joy you get from watching him as well? Because I genuinely thought maybe a couple of years ago with the injuries he was having that his career was in jeopardy. I really really thought that, and it looked at one point that this is going to be a, as much as I think he's like a straight A student. He's you know got a lot going on in his life. Um, if he if football didn't work out for him, you're like this is going to be a completely waste of talent, and he's so dynamic, and you could see. Um, the Rovers were looking for him down the right, and uh, I don't. I but just the reason, the reasoning for that was Ollie O'Neill off there. He was the, it was the left winger. Yeah, actually tucked in in the second half to stop Rovers in the build up play. Yeah. So the two centre midfielders, which was Poom and and Watts, Ollie O'Neill tucked in to help out the midfield. Another. And then um, oh no, it's just replay. Arsenal two bomber two and, still. Um, what happened was then that freed up. Perugia in a 1v1 situation and that allowed him to get more of the ball and he was able to run he done really well in carrying Rovers up the pitch I think the frustration from Neil was when he's getting into them positions can he pick out somebody or have a bit more of an end product he had yeah. a couple of chances he took in, he played off Gaffney really well outside the left boot yeah. follows it and then he tries to bend yeah. one you can see the ideas there but I, the raw I, materials are there Johnny are I, right, like, I, I, was, I was down in Waterford JD it was like two, nearly 3,000 what's a Waterford whiskey by the way so, um, it's just it's obviously distilled in Waterford I, I honestly never heard of it now it's, it's I not I thought it was a type of Type of one rather than like yeah, it's like a dingle whiskey or like right. Teeling's whatever. So it's Watford. Um, not not trying to promote drinking whiskey here, but if you're, <laughs> I, I was definitely a fan. I know Mark Roster is being into his whiskeys and he wasn't uh, knocking me, but the the the, the crowd in Watford JD was 
2800 and it was only a small away support and the RSC really there's no bar around it there isn't much going on in the ground there was a big vibe in uh, an hour before kickoff again and the League of Ireland is just like it's it's in such a good place at the moment it's not it's not reached where it should be but um, the crowds are consistently coming in and that that game wasn't on TV last night a lot of people are critical of that but I'm at this stage where I'm like TV is kind of it's not really relevant anymore the, you know the, the anecdotally the viewing figures for League of Ireland games on TV aren't that great while at the same time crowds are way up so I think it's social media it's the involvement as well of the young teams that like I was making this point yesterday on the on the road it's lovely lovely to have a road trip as well you go with like a couple of fans and you chat about like your life and you know following games and old games and we're chatting about like when the, the underage teams came in say you have 14s 15s 17s 19s that's at least 20 players right at least what how many coaches three or four coaches you've at least um, if that's 20 players multiplied by 20 clubs that's 400 that's 800 parents um, and that's another thousands of friends yeah. who are necessarily invested in the club yeah. and I think as much as the FEI have made some bad decisions that was one thing it, they really got right the underage leagues and th- with the, the Women's National League coming in now um and becoming such a, a sort of an all-encompassing thing in terms of the league, it's but just really, cl- really going places. And clubs are becoming clubs, JD, as well. Okay, just want to update you on the Women's National League. Shelburne six, Cork City in the result today from Talca Park. Megan Smith Lynch with two goals. Uh, Wexford Youths won one nil away to Galway United, uh, with Kira Roster on the mark there in the Camogie League Division One A. Dublin eleven points, Kilkenny seventeen. A result from Parnell Park, six point win for the Kittens. Uh, Galway uh, one twelve, Clare ten points is a half time f- score from a Kilbeck County. Kil- Kilbacon TJD. I told you it's Kilbacon. I know. It's just, I've never still, heard of these places yeah, that are outside. It's like Dublin. up and at them. But it's only the pale. I already know. I know. <laughs> apart from that. Proper proper South Galway hurling country. Uh, Cork one eight, uh, Tipperary eight point, oh, ten points. So a one point lead now. Uh, that scores is changing as I speak. Cork one eleven, Tipperary ten points at the rag. A uh, bit of a disappointing afternoon for Israel Alatunde, finishing seventh in his uh, semi final of the sixty meters at the European Indoor Championships in Istanbul. He will not qualify for the final. In Bahrain Grand Prix qualifying, Max Verstappen, as we expect, started uh, on pole. Uh, he finished at the top of the qualifying. Sergio Perez second, Charles Leclerc in third. So as you were in terms of expectations for the Bahrain Grand Prix, the season opener there tomorrow in the Premier League. We're watching Arsenal and Bournemouth 2-2. There was a, I've seen them given moment there in terms of penalty check for handball. Um, still 10 minutes to go, but Arsenal, yeah, getting a little bit anxious. Uh, Aston Villa 1, Crystal Palace 0. Brighton 3, West Ham 0. Chelsea 1, Leeds 0. Wolves 0, Spurs 0 in the Championship. Will Smallbone with two assists uh, for Stoke in their leading Sunderland 5-1. Uh, Watford nil, Preston nil, Wigan one, Birmingham one. It's Rotherham two, QPR nil, Millwall one, Norwich three, Middlesbrough five, Reading nil, Luton one, Swansea nil, Huddersfield nil, Coventry three, Burnley and Blackpool are goalless in Scotland. Rangers are leading away to, or sorry, at home rather, at Ibrox against Kilmarnock by three goals to one. Laura, would you have a favourite ever Liverpool Man United game you played in? Um, no, not really. <laughs> That's good, <laughs> isn't it? Um, they were all battles, John. They, they, they were all battles. I remember that uh, certainly, so, that, so you'd have obviously Brian Robson playing for Man U, uh, Sunes playing midfield for us. Um, I used to get shipped in to midfield for those games because he had, was it Remy Moses? Yeah. Um, and uh, they were just they were just kicking matches, to be honest with you. There was hardly any football ever, ever played in them. Uh, very, very few goals <laughs> scored as well. Um, I mean, there was a, there'd be a big Irish contingent in both teams, wouldn't there? Yeah, Frank Stapleton, Kevin Moran, you must have played against them. Y- yeah, Paul. Paul McGrath. Paul yeah, McGrath, yeah, Ashley yeah. Grimes. Yeah, Ashley, yeah. yeah. Um, me, obviously, Ronnie, Jim Beglin, Michael Robinson. Yeah, the late Michael I've Robinson. I've missed somebody out of bound to have done. But um, yeah, and the great thing about it was if I ever played on a Saturday and it, and it coincided with a. Uh, with an international week when we're at home, we, we all jumped on the plane afterwards together on Air Lingus, about 10 of us and had a few jars and looked at our wounds. Ah, lovely. Did you see the Liam Brady documentary, Laro? You should check it out. No, so. I can't. You go, listen, you promised on air you were going to get it to yeah, me but somehow. You, but I've got, I'm, I'm like, the post is slow, so... Um... Look, we'll, really? we'll, sort, we'll sort it out for you, Laro. We'll sort it out. Stamps have, ju- stamps have just gone up here, 6%. Right, okay. Okay. <laughs> it must be Brexit or something like that. Um, something. Name everything on Brexit. Uh, Arsenal 2, Bournemouth 2 at the moment. It, would, if they don't win this, would this be a, a, a bit of a wobble for Arsenal, Laura, do you think? Yeah, but you can, you can, still, you can have a wobble and still, and still win it. 
Um, I don't think there's any great doubt about that whatsoever. But I, I suggest they'll probably make it 3 2, won't they? And then yeah. that, that feeling in the dressing room will be one of like, wow. You know, and no matter what a, the manager says, you know, and, you know, and we'll sort it out, we'll line out the problems and all those kind of things on Monday. It's like, it's, 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 it would be a massive result for them. And it would just be yet another way of convincing all that squad in that dressing room that they really can win the Premier League. It's hard to explain what happened with Spurs the other night away to Sheffield United. You don't play Kane for 65 minutes. You don't play Romero. You lose to Sheffield United. It's, John, yeah. I, I, I listened on the radio. I was coming back from uh, uh, the Wolves game and I listened on the radio. I just, I can't understand Tottenham. I, I just, I can't understand them at all. They're just, in the first half of the games, there's just nothing, is there? No. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see what the plan is. Then, then you'll say to me, oh, well, hold on. We, we, we came back in the second half when you beat Chelsea and, and you beat um, West Ham as yeah. well. But I, I, I just don't get it. And your man's not coming back, is he? Well, he's he, well, he's back, but he, he's not coming back. I don't think after the end of the season. Nah. Um, no, nah. worst kept secret in the world. That is. Yeah, and Pochettino possibly by uh, coming in. Mm. Um, oh, well, you take him, wouldn't you? No, well, I, I, I don't think that gives the owners a pass. It'd be three and a half years since they sacked him. Uh, nothing's progressed in the interim. You're 15 years without a trophy. Uh, you're trying to prioritise winning even an FA Cup. You saw what the winning a League Cup did for Man United's confidence and, and sense mm. of direction last week and the direction of travel. I think for Spurs, are an absolute disgrace here tonight. Um, and that comes from the top, it's, so... Remember I texted yeah. you with the Richarlison, I was like, is he still Brazilian? He had a shot in the first half that, I, I don't know if he was trying to hit the corner flag, but it practically did. And I was just like, <laughs> where? But honestly, you think of how we start the World Cup and you're like, God, this could be a great... I, I, you, know what I, you, know what I, you know what I think? I think the World Cup standard is a much le- lower level than... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, than, like, yeah, Enzo, yeah. They're talking about Enzo Fernandez being this new saviour for Chelsea and he might have a good career at Chelsea, but just because he had a good World Cup and was a good young player of the World Cup, I don't think it's comparable anyway it's, to I mean, you can't, You can't throw an international... It, the World Cup is an tournament. exciting tournament, yeah, but it's not like you're not you're not training day in day out to say I know the players absolutely, Judy. Yeah, um, so that's what's going on there. Aston Villa one, uh, Crystal Palace nil, Brighton three, West Ham nil. Evan Ferguson starting that game today. Wolves nil, Spurs nil in the Premier League. Um, Arsenal two, Bournemouth two. Just in terms of the uh, the actual outcome then tomorrow, I know we kind of talked about the issues around Liverpool, United, Laro, but in terms of tactics, in terms of what kind of game it'll be? You think it'll be Liverpool pressing, and can they maintain that because they couldn't against Real Madrid for the ninety? No, I th- well, I think I just think it'll be really, really tight, John. And you know they've they've made smallish improvement in in the last few games. No shot that Van Dijk's back in. Obviously, Canate in as well tomorrow. I would have thought, but um, they're still not right. And I and I would think as. As much as Jurgen would say that, you know, yeah, we want to win it and all that, what they don't want to do is lose it. Because um, then again, every, everything starts yet again about, you know, not buying enough players, all those kind of things whatsoever. So, I, I, and if you look at, and you lads were talking about it before when I was listening, um, United are very much set up to play on the counter-attack. And when, when they do score, Casemiro gets the wagon circled, um, you know, the goalkeeper's in good form as well. Varane looks like the player they thought they signed ages ago. And, um, you know, they've just, they've just got some really good players in there. And I, I love the fellow Martinez as well in there because he just, he just wants to defend. And I, just, I think it'd be really, really difficult for, for Liverpool. But I would just say that for Liverpool, is, it is not to get beat. He's given up on the tie, funnily enough, which I think is, you know, if they get the first goal... You know. Well, they beat City. They, they were under, under the backs against the wall against Man City earlier this season and they produced a performance and won 1-0. Um, Give it a go. Um, but speaking of the devil, Wolves have scored against Spurs. Uh, Adam Atrari, who Spurs were interested in once, uh, has scored probably the first goal ever. Um, I'm kind of, a, I'm just being a bit like, bitter. I'm being, just being bitter because he never <laughs> scores goals and he's just scored one now against listen, Spurs. If, if, if the, listen, if the open stands for wherever he scored, if you're running down the road now without the ball, <laughs> Um, yeah, so Chelsea won Leeds nil, uh, 90th minute there. Uh, Brighton three, West Ham nil. Villa won Palace nil. Gavin Bazunu starts for Southampton against Leicester. Look, I just think whether it's good or bad or whether they're going down, he's getting great experience. Absolutely, and you're playing in it. You're playing in a struggling team as well. It's not like it's it's much easier going to a team sort of mid table. It's like Collins. I mean, if you're playing in this team that's struggling, you lack experience. It's it's demanding a lot of you, and uh, that's a good opportunity for Southampton tonight. Uh, Everton, yeah. go on, Laro, yeah. It'll just be it'll be interesting to see what West Ham do. Yeah, yeah. your mate. Mm. That's right. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah Cuz like, um, does he have does he have credit in the bank from last season or Yeah, he did he, he certainly did have, but um that's a few I mean they took the lead at Man United, got beat 3-1, didn't they? Got yeah. beat 2-0 at Tottenham. Yeah. Obviously got done as well, getting done today. And I don't know, I, I just, Sullivan's on his own as well now. And he's, he might just be thinking, especially if the, if the punters are getting a ro- bit raucous, he might be thinking, time for a change. Yeah, like I the, don't know. the live table is West Ham 23 points, Leeds 22, they're losing. Bournemouth 22, Everton 21. And Leicester 24, mm. it's tight. It's really, really tight. Everton can't score goals, Laro. Is that could be maybe their downfall? Um, possibly, but I presume Calvert Lewin must be getting closer to fitness, and the the way that Sean Dice sets his teams up, I think I think certainly at Goodison, I would think they'll they'll win quite a few games. Um, oh, poor because it, I mean, it's a it's yeah. a really difficult place to go there, regardless of where they are in the league. It's horrible. Yeah, they, they're they're a poor side, Laurel. To be fair, aren't they? Yes. It's like in, in yeah. fairness to Lampard, I'm not sure many managers would have done much better with them. No. Um, we were talking about Tom Jones earlier on Indiana Jones at 15-2 to two has won the uh, Flying Boat Novel Chase uh, at, at Grade 3 there nice at, price uh, at, at Navin um, trained by Mass Morris and uh, ridden by Darrell Keefe that's the big race of the day uh, domestically um, we've into injury time here JD and yeah is this a, another big moment for Arsenal uh, what have we got six minutes six minutes has given them hope um, Odegaard trying to pull the strings fascinating six minutes ahead Brighton 4-0 now Hopefully, uh, Laro, you should be in this chair. To be yeah. honest, no, yeah, that shouldn't be. There's one for you. Laro was presenter. Danny Welbeck, Danny four Welbeck. nil. That uh, is some result. Mm. That is some result for Brighton. That might well be the nail in the coffin goal. It might be a difficult one for. We spoke to Gavin um, Hulahan, yeah, yeah, earlier on today. A great week for him. Great. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, ex Galway United. <laughs> you always, uh, boy, many times you mention Galway United and Crum, the crumbs but, of uh, comfort. There's crumbs a bingo. There's actually a bingo, and, and um, uh, Johnny yeah. wins a prize at the end of the show. What, what, a, what a night though for the big man. Ah, was brilliant. I think he's done an article saying his first memory about the FA Cup, and I was remember I was watching highlights of the game back and just how he's seen out the game and it looked like he's seen out the game against Southampton quite comfortably. Actually, he's a Kenny boy, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. It's another... Tell me this. Tell me this. I bet Grimsby are getting beat today, aren't they? Well, they're up at Carlisle, um, and and Gavin didn't travel, uh, so we'll we'll just yeah. check it now for you. He, he's Absolute. a lot of, a lot of, lot Absolute of players from Kilkenny. Yeah, a lot of players from Kilkenny, JD. It's it's sad that like I I uh, I've been to Buckley Park a few times. Kilkenny City had a club, and it, obviously it's a hurling. Two nil, they're, they're losing. Yeah, two nil, they're Rumble, losing. There are a lot of yeah. players there. You knew that, Laura, already, didn't you? You knew that. True. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great. You know, I played in Buckley Park for yeah. And it, during lockdown, I, I broke one of the curfews when these you know and because I some I don't know why I was in Kenny, but I, I I asked to be brought to Buckley Park and I looked in and it was kind of the ground was I think they're still playing it, but it was very kind of overgrown around the perimeter and it was like you know it'd be lovely to see football back. Emfa wasn't it? Emfa were the old team and Kerry like Kerry scoring their first goal in the league last night. Um, great buzz around Tralee for, sold out again, albeit only twelve hundred. But um, I think Kerry if if Kerry can make a goal. Was give the kind of some motivation to the likes of Monaghan and Kilkenny, even maybe Thurless Town clubs like that. That um, you know you could bring football back to these regions at a national level. And uh, but Damien Duff Shelburne won last night as well. Hashtag they, they, Duff yeah, they, they had a really good win actually, and he's quite passionate after the game about it. Um, he was disappointed they didn't get a result against Pats. He, he seemed a little bit unlucky against. Um, I think Shells felt unlucky they didn't get out of the game and Pat's nick a win late on with Owen Doyle who was a friend of the show Owen Doyle who you had on a couple of times he um, he nicked the goal I was talking to him after it the, the, the um, funny but thing about then, then Pat's go and Pat's go and lose 5-0 5-0 I mean, up in Dundalk um, like, which, footage emerging of uh, Stephen O'Donnell giving um, a lot of fist bumps to the crowd after I think this meant a lot to him against his former club but the thing about Damien Duff JD is you know and Duff talks a good game he said oh, I want my team to dominate possession they're probably the most like Italian team one of the most like well drilled very very hard to break down teams that the League of Ireland has seen um, both he and Joey O'Brien and as much as Duff wasn't like that at all as a player he was obviously a flamboyant winger or striker his teams are actually really really um, conservative in the way they play they, yeah, they try to shut you yeah. down pragmatic and that's uh, that's how it's going for him I got away one twelve. Right. Playing under Marino would have done that. Wouldn't yeah, well, he yeah, learned. Yeah. He learned. He learned from the best. Uh, Goy won twelve. Yeah. Clare twelve points in the Camogie in Division One A. Tiberi one ten. Cork one twelve. Both of those games got ten minutes left. Will Smallbone three assists for He's Stoke a player. today. He's a player. Five one. They lead Sunderland. Has he got a chance? He can't be that far off. Uh, like Graham. 
Yeah, I, I, again, it's something that the Ireland were crying out for is creativity in midfield. Cullen's obviously good at starting the game and initiating the the, the first phase of that build-up play, but they do need something create uh, creativity-wise further up the pitch. It's something we've been crying out for um, probably since Wes Houlihan has has, has come out as squad. Um, He's played a bit with Ferguson at the ago. 21s as well, so they have a little bit of a relationship. Yeah, and I know that I know that they speak really highly of him in the FAI as well. From the 21s, Jim Crawford had him last season okay. for the while, and he was very good. So. Okay, like we're, Arsenal we're, we're, we're about to go off air. Um, Arsenal 2, Bournemouth 2, 94 minutes into a 96 minutes of a game here in the Premier League. Remember, earlier on, Man City won by two goals to nil against Newcastle. Uh, Wolves lead Spurs 1-0. Results, Chelsea have won. Massive for Graham Potter, 1-0 against Leeds. Brighton have beaten West Ham 4-1. It is Aston Villa 1, Crystal Palace 0 in the closing stages there in the Championship. Uh, results, Blackburn 1, Sheffield United 0. Result, Cardiff 2, Bristol City 0. It has finished Blackpool 0, Burnley 0 and Middlesbrough 5, Ready 0. Latest scores, uh, Huddersfield 0, Coventry 4 and Luton 1, Swansea 0. Latest scores, Millwall 2, Norwich 3, Rotherham 3, QPR 1, Sunderland 1, Stoke 5, as we said, Watford 0, Preston 0, Wigan 1, Birmingham 1, and in Scotland, Rangers beat Kilmarnock 3-1. Latest scores, Hearts 3, St. Johnston 0, Livingston 1, Hibernian 3, and Ross County 0, Motherwell 2. Laro, enjoy tomorrow. Will do. Call it, Jamie. Cheers, guys. Laro, call it, by the way. Laro, call it. Say what? Call it. I've got that. You're all garbled. Call it. Call the game. What's the score going to be? Nil, nil. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Johnny, call it. Man United 2-1, something like that. 2 all. 1-0 to Man United for me. Got to leave it there. Johnny, Graham, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, Arsenal 2, Bournemouth 2 is uh, still the score. Don't forget, off the ball back tomorrow, Joe Malloy from 1-7 to 7 here on News Talk, showcasing live and two exclusive commentary games from the Premier League. Nathan Murphy and Keith Tracy providing the call on Nottingham Forest match against Everton from the City Grand. Then Stephen Doyle and Kenny Cunningham describing that showdown between Liverpool and Manchester United exclusively here on News Talk from Anfield, all on FM. Also the Sunday paper review across our digital and social channels from half 11. Be sure to join us tomorrow for some great commentary and conversation. If you missed any of this OTB Football Saturday programme with Mark Lawrence and Graham Gartland and Johnny Ward or the interviews with FA Cup hero Gavin Houlihan, Luke Smith on the new Formula One season or David Casey ahead of Cheltenham, you can find the podcast on the OTB Sports app or be sure to listen back wherever you get your pods. Thanks for listening to us in your radio across the country here on News Talk Today. It's still Arsenal 2, Bournemouth 2. We'll speak tomorrow at 1. Bye-bye.